Hi guys and welcome. I wanted to share a proper tutorial on how to make the Kintsugi material that I've worked on and showed a few pictures of on Instagram. Uh, so uh, let's just follow along and you can see how I create the material all from scratch. Okay, so here we are in uh, Keisha. I just pulled up the old image and as you can see my computer is insane, insanely slow. It's running at 0 0.2 and I have nothing else open, so I don't know, it's just very, very slow. So, but I just wanted to show you the material that we're working on. It's uh, quite complex, as you can see here, and yet it's not that complex. So in reality, we are dealing with a plastic material and more or less all the stuff you see up here is... Um, all of this more or less is made based on a tutorial that uh, Liam Martin has made. I'll link to his uh, YouTube tutorial below, um, so you can follow along here. He might be able to describe it much better than I do. Um, and then some of this stuff down here is is something that I added on, the displacement and stuff like that. And then also down here you have what is actually creating the Kintsugi material down here. It's a metal, so. But that's just to show you what we're going to be making here today. I'm going to go into my um, my lighting setup, and the, it's a product that's good enough. And I'm going to go into this one to see if I have enough light so that I can actually capture the reflections that I need. And then I'm going to start adding a real material. So go into my materials tab over here. I'm going to look for a paint. Uh, paint glossy glossy paint that's what we'll do can I really see the highlights control and then oh yeah there we go so now, now I can see some highlights which is what I'm looking for to be able to tell if this material actually is going to perform like I want it to I'm going to double click on that and you can see paint glass white uh, I'm going to rename that to paint Kintsuki. Then I'm going to open the material graph. As you can see, we have a material and we have a paint. And the paint doesn't seem to do what I want. Why don't it? Doesn't let me know. Ah, I'm going to pick a plastic instead. So it looks nice over here, but it gives me more features like the specular one, which I need. Uh, and then because I can work with roughness and stuff like that. Okay. I am going to go in and then add the main. Uh, deal that's going to help me make my colors and it's going to be a texture, a curvature texture. It's got a negative and, and what I normally do is I press C so I can uh, see what is going on and right now nothing is going on so what you can tell is that, let me just move this to the side here, the cutoff, normally that it helps you make a change that you normally see in uh, quite a lot of ceramics out there but the cutoff is way too large it has to be smaller you can see something is happening over here on the left uh, that's too much but maybe around that 0 0.06 and then i'm going to add the radius to be much bigger maybe 20. yeah that looks quite nice so that will help me out getting a nice change in material i don't want it to be this one but i want it to have maybe a darker edge up here and that's too dark maybe this one yeah that's a little bit burnt and then i want uh, not for this one, sorry. For this one, I want to be able to add something like uh, this is the main color, like this. Yeah, that sounds pretty good, like a medium thing. Um, for negative curvature, I'm going to maybe just use a, a darker one, maybe like an even darker one. All right. Okay, this is good enough. Then I'm going to add that into my diffuse. And immediately you see the material become available in there, which is great. Um, and then I want to be able to add something else to this one, which is a material, a texture. So I have this over here. You can see materials and you have textures. Uh, let's see if there's anything in here. Imagery? No. Uh, nothing here. But I know that I have it over here. So if I go over here and look at my textures, I'm looking for a rusty material, so I can type rusty. 
and this one is the one I've been using so far. It's pretty good, so I'm going to use that again. Dragging it over here, and I have a texture map, which is great for me. And let me just switch back here so we can see the whole thing. Um, and this one, okay. This one, I would love to use up here, but I cannot do that unless I do a color composite, which is this one. And what is really important when you do this is that you have to remember to combine two things here. If I just pull this one into my background, nothing happens. And that's because this one source takes all of the things. So you have to go in and change the blending mode, which is this one, to maybe multiply. And now suddenly everything is, is visible. It's way too much. Uh, and I would probably go in and add something here between the, I'll just zoom out a little bit here. Between the image, I would like to maybe go in here and add a utility. I'll just right click there and I will add a color adjust. And in the color adjust settings, I will turn down the saturation, maybe down to this one. I would edge up the contrast. Now that's too much. So I'll turn that down a little bit, maybe like this. Um, oh, and I forgot something really also, which is quite nice, and, and to have that in the, in mind at the beginning. I think I've adjusted the settings pretty well, but the material itself over here, if I double click on that one, the, the image, it's set to box, which is not what I want. I want it to be a cylinder. And now it looks weird, as you can tell, but if I go into uh, cylinder on part and move to texture, and then I go into fit to around the Y axis, I guess, yes. Uh, it immediately becomes much better. I can rotate it around so I have something that I like. Um, this is much better. This is what I'm, what I'm looking for. All right, so still looking at that. I am going to, that was actually my, my which was a main color. I'm gonna reuse this image quite a few times actually. So, because the specular one is also pretty good to get in there, but before I do that, I want to a add a utility that's called color to number, and that allows me to change the settings of how the image looks, right? I'm gonna put that in there. Because I wanna be able to get, um, if I'm just gonna zoom in, um, so if I go all the way closer here, then I need to figure out what is the, the areas that are uh, reflecting light and the areas that are not reflecting light. And in this case, I wanted to be able to, to do a little tweaking on that one. So if I double click on this one and put it on the C, I can see what it looks like now. The darker it is, I believe the more reflective it is. So, oh, it's probably reversed. So the darker it is, the less reflective it is. And actually, I'm not really happy with the way the color of this, or the radius. Maybe I should do a 25. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. Okay. This uh, this actually looks pretty well. The colors number that I did here. Maybe it's too much. So maybe I'm just gonna. Back on, no, no, you go back a little bit more. Maybe if I reverse this. Oh, yeah, now you see the whole thing becomes very, very shiny. Oh, yeah, this is what I was going to look for. Okay, so the darker bits are not, and the other thing is more, but it's still way too shiny. It might be a little bit more like this, which gives me reflection, but still a lot of non reflective bits, which I think I like. Still, maybe this is better. Yeah, this might do. You can just sit around and tweak this a lot, but I think this is pretty good. Okay, and uh, then I need to add a bump. Now, I could just bump this one up, and I actually would, would love that, but I kind of want to do more with the bump so I'm going to add a spot because that gives the sort of an extra detail to the 
to the whole thing. Now if you notice I press C here and now you can't see anything other than a few dots. I'm gonna scale this up to maybe 15. Way, way big. Then I'm gonna add in a this is around three maybe. Yeah. And then I'm gonna add a distortion and some more polos. The radius is bigger, that's pretty good. Maybe that's too much. Like this. And then polos, make it more soft, that's too much. Just like that. Then I'm gonna change the number of dots we have. And this just makes the whole thing more interesting. Maybe more. Oh, this is a lot. This is good. I'm loving. I'm loving this already. Okay, that's about it. Now, I want to use that as a bump map. But before I do that, I actually want to do two bumps. So I'm gonna bump add this one. So I have this one to be one of the bumps, the second bump, and then this one to be the first bump. All right, and then I'm gonna change the weight of this one so that doesn't become as strong uh, and then I'm gonna go into the bump now we have a material that starts to look well it's still maybe it's a bit too much this one here so I'm gonna tone down the weight of this to maybe 0 0.3 I just want it to be a little bit more structured uh, like it's a little bit more like handmade maybe all the way down to this it's just subtleties and it's just gonna add a little bit to the whole reflectiveness okay now this look this is looking good it's great it's like an old cup great now um we kind of have our main material which is great that wasn't so bad was it now what do we do how do we break this up in bits well i what i did at, at least was to go in and add a label to my material so you can see it says, well, maybe you can, can't see it, but I'm just going to zoom in over here. There's a label down there. So, well, normally I would go in and for this consumer material, I use the cellular one because it's awesome. And if I press C on this one, you can see what it looks like. Pretty bad if I want to do what I want to do. I want the white ones to be very clean and very crisp and the, black, the, the dark areas to be completely black if I can. So I'm going to go in. Also, I think it's way too... Uh, small and there's way too many cracks in this one. I want to maybe go up to 45 to make it really big and then you can't see anything, but I'll, I'll change that. Let's uh, go into contrast here and then just see here. Yep, that's good. Oh, yeah, look at this. Now it's something is happening. I really want it to be this to be really, really dark and that there's not much shining through. And I think I would like to have a little bit of noise, not much, maybe a little bit like that. And that should do it. I think this maybe the scale. A little less. Oh, this might be good. Mm, yeah. This maybe. Oh, here we go. Okay, this is great. Still okay. No, it's not. There's something weird happening over here. Um, we need to take maybe a little bit as well. If this is good. All right. Okay, we have it with this, but it doesn't really look like the white is very white, so very, really white. So I'm going to add in a utility, which is called a hmm, color adjust I'm going to go with today. Press C again to get out of it. Add that into the color. I'm going to go in here. Double click on this one. Press C. You see it, but I want to make the contrast. Too much. Oh, that's too much. No, I want to get the value. Here we go. I'm still having this one, but the value is too small, so maybe make that three. Yeah, maybe five. Very white. And then up in the contrast, we have those thin lines that I want. Might as well, perhaps. No, eight. And you can see the value is too much, so maybe four. Three. Oh, that's too much. Uh, Three point five. Here we go. That's the winner. That's the winner we have it right there. Great. So I'm gonna add this, and I can't just add it straight away as a label. So I need to actually make a material that I want to use for the label. And I've used the metal. You know, it's Kintsugi is 
normally thought of as gold, so I, that's the typical normal material that you would use for that. So I'm going to use it as well. So I add this one into my opacity. Double click on the middle, and instead of just color, I would choose measure, use gold. And I think that's about it for without doing anything else. I could add some stuff here, but let's just keep it clean at the moment. And let's add that to a label. <gasps> it broke. But the good thing about having it like a, a texture, I can always move the texture a little bit around, you know, scale it, all that stuff. So it's pretty, uh, you know, flexible in that way. And that's like sort of how we break it up. Now, I would also love to use my, this one as a displacement. So because Kintsuki materials are oftentimes they are a little bit, uh, you know, bumpy, they, they're just not flat uh, unless you treat it in a different way. And I would like to, you know, bump it up a little bit. So I'm going to add a geometry, a displacement, and up here, press this one. Now I'm going to press the color adjust up there to displace. Double click on the displacement height. It's going to be maybe one millimeters. And I'm going to have the triangle size should be maybe 0 0.1 maybe. And I'm going to add that into a geometry. And now let's see what happens when I click the geometry node. It should displace the whole thing. And it did. Now that's pretty good. So I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. Wondering if I can add a color composite here and maybe add a background. Just give it some sort of unevenness. So if I use the noise texture here, I'm going to use that as a background. I'm just double thing it to see. And I'll see, and then I'm going to maybe. I'm just going to try and use this as a background here. And then double the this is one and making it a blend mode of a uh, let's just choose hold it line and then geometry node again to see what will happen to my very even should become a little less it's hard to tell oh yeah it looks like it's already got a little bit of a you know unevenness so this is pretty good i'm pretty happy with this and, and that's basically how you make a Kintsugi material that are procedural, more or less. At least the Kintsugi part is procedural, so that's good. Uh, you have to use some sort of texture. You might have been able to get away with this texture in a different way, but I added it like that. So that's, uh, that's the Kintsugi material there for you. And uh, let's just go ahead and see the results. And that's like a better view. Perhaps with a different environment, if even though the environment was pretty good. Now I actually like the, the environment there. Sort of gives you a nice understanding of what the material does. So yeah, so that's about it. Uh, and then you can go in and you can say, well, it's not fine enough. I want the interior render. I want to bump up the shadow quality. I want to use... Uh, my backdrop ramp that I've hidden here. And this looks really weird right now because the light is all weird. Um, so I don't like that environment very much. So I'm going to use this one instead or that one maybe. So play around with it and have fun. So uh, thanks for watching. I really hope you learned something. Talk to you later. Bye.